Oscilloscope probes of one form or another are essential when using an oscilloscope, but to get the best results you need to know how to set them up properly. If not, they could lead to the scope giving inaccurate readings. In this video, we'll take a look at scope probes, what they are and how they work, and describe how to set them up or adjust the compensation as it's called. Let's start by looking at the probes. The most common type of oscilloscope probe is what's called a passive voltage probe, and although it will be possible to just use a piece of wire or coax, this definitely isn't the best way to connect the scope to the item being tested. A proper probe is much better. This type of probe comes in two main varieties. There's what's called a times one probe, and there's also a times ten. The times one gives you better sensitivity, but a one mega ohm input resistance. Or there's the times ten that gives you a ten mega ohm input resistance but it reduces the signal by a factor of 10. It's times 10 because it has 10 times the input resistance, and therefore it will affect the circuit being tested much less. Often a single probe may be switchable between times 1 and times 10. This lets you choose between sensitivity and loading the circuit. Also, there are some times 100 probes, but these are not nearly so common. Scopes normally have a 1 mega ohm input impedance, and sometimes there may also be a 50 ohm capability as well. Passive probes typically use the 1 mega ohm input impedance, although some more specialist probes are designed to work on 50 ohms, and they'll be marked as being 50 ohm probes. Probes present an impedance to the circuit under test. For passive probes, this is a 1 mega ohm at DC, and for times 10 probes, it's 10 mega ohms but there is also some capacitance as well. This capacitance has a major effect and causes significant discrepancies, even at quite low frequencies. But it's only the times 10 and also times 100 and, and similar probes that need compensation adjustments. For times 10 probes to compensate for the scope capacitance, a capacitor is placed across the 9 mega ohm resistor in the probe. Compensation adjustment is provided either at the remote end of the probe or where it connects to the scope. The adjustment enables the correct capacitance potential divider ratio to be obtained to take up any small changes in capacitance and this gives a flat response. The adjuster is a small screw which can be trimmed. It's found either at the tip of the probe as we see here or at the point where the probe connects to the scope as we see on this probe. A small adjuster with a screwdriver slot will be seen in a hole on the probe. Often people will use a small metal screwdriver for the adjustment, but ideally a non-conductive tool should be used because it's less likely to affect any readings as a result of any stray capacitances. It's not essential, but a very good idea. Sadly, probes themselves don't usually come with an adjuster, so tools intended for adjusting RF circuits can often be pressed into service for this. On all scopes there will be an internal square wave generator. Often there is a small connection on the front panel onto which the probe can very easily be clipped. So clip the probe on and check the resulting waveform. Normally it is a relatively low frequency waveform, but this is more than good enough for adjusting the compensation. If the resulting trace is rounded like this, then there is insufficient compensation. But if there are spikes on the leading edge, then it means there is too much. So adjust the waveform so that it's as square as possible, and normally this is very easy to do. It may take a few seconds, but that's all. And the process is the same whatever the type of scope, whether it's for a USB scope like the one we've already seen, or for a bench scope like the one we see here. It's worth remembering that the probe compensation needs to be readjusted if the probe is used on a different input, even on the same scope. This is because the values of capacitance on different inputs will vary slightly and therefore a new adjustment is needed each time. In fact, it's worth getting into the habit of compensating a probe each time it's used because it may have been used on a different input or a different scope. It's very important to compensate the probe because it can make a real difference to readings, especially when higher frequency signals are being monitored. 
See how adjusting the compensation affects the readings for this 1 MHz signal. It can make quite a difference. Not only does the compensation adjustment affect the voltages, as we saw before, but it can also change the waveform shapes. And one instance where this can be very important is when measuring rise and fall times of waveforms. This form of compensation is often referred to as LF compensation. In high bandwidth probes, compensation is added for HF signals to give the required bandwidth. This is normally adjusted during manufacture, and so there are no user adjustments for this. For more information about scope probes and their adjustment, check out the video description, and please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and like the video.